Here we go again with Career Conversations with Joe Terry. Today we're going to talk about our passion for people. That's really at the heart of building a great culture is really to have that passion and surround yourselves with people who also have that passion, that you are aligned on your values and belief systems around how you treat each other, uh, how you work together, how you serve others, how you treat the customers, and you're passionate about that. And if you get that right, you know, it makes everything else easier. So enjoy and let me know any comments or feedback you might have. I want to talk about commitment for me. I want to transition a little bit. You told me such a great story and uh, I, I told you I was going to ask you this. And around commitment, you brought up training and uh, nutrition and the fact we didn't touch on this enough, like you do, you do Ironman triathlons. You've done how many now in your life? 11. 11 Ironman triathlons. So amazing. And you told me a story about why you do these that I, I just think is fascinating and I've shared with people and I want to turn it over to you because tell me how much you love running, swimming and biking. And that's why you do it. Tell, tell, tell me the story you told me in my, in my office a while back. Yeah, I love it about that much. <laughs> yeah, that's um, I I you know I was a football player and I was just looking for something to keep me in the competitive mode for the rest of my life. You can't play football for the rest of your life, and and I I done on other sports, but I really wanted something that both got into the physical and mental game. And so I got in to uh, Ironman. It started with a very small sprint triathlon yeah. that just got me hooked. And I cried like a baby when I finished it. And it was like a 400 yard swim, a 12 mile bike and a three mile run. And I came across the finish line and I was like bawling because I'm like, I can't believe I did that. Because again, I like to swim, bike and run about yeah. that much and and it starts with swim and it's like bike and it's like run and so i don't like to do any of those things however it's the process right it's the process that you go through in training for ironman you can't fake it right you have to get up every single day whether you want to or not to and it's a many month and multiple year commitment and you've got family and you've got work and so you have to be able to figure out how do I optimize this and 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 it's all about consistency right and so you train and there's a process to training this and so you train and you got to spend a lot of hours in the pool a lot of hours on the bike and a lot of hours out on the pavement running and again and it's not something I like to do. Yeah. However, the beauty about that process is that it prepares you for the race, the Ironman, right? And, and as I said, you can't fake it because what happens, what happens in an Ironman, and the, this is the beauty for me in Ironman, is it takes life and it just goes, and it condenses it into a 10 to 11 hour period where you're on this roller coaster of life and you're doing an Ironman, right? Yeah. What happens, you get in the swim and you're like swimming, you're like, oh, I don't feel so good, man. Boy, this is tiring. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you get on the bike and you got to do 112 miles on the bike and there's multiple points on the bike where you may not have done well in your nutrition and you're going back and forth emotionally trying to work yourself through that. And then you get on the run and the run is the game changer. That's where- a Marathon on top of a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then you gotta run a marathon. Then you gotta run a marathon. And <laughs> this is where all dreams are crushed, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're on this marathon and you know, there's people puking and quitting and walking and you're running this marathon and you have to focus, you just have to focus. And what happens in this process is 
you'll hit a point and you're like, I can't even take another step. I, I, I got to quit. I'm done. My body can't go anymore. And you have to work through that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're like, it's okay. Keep going. It's all right. You've trained for this. Remember all those mornings you've trained and you talk yourself through it. And then all of a sudden it's okay again. And then all of a sudden it feels great. And you're like, wow, I can go for days. And then you realize you have to temper yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. Hold on a second. This is a long race in a mile or so. It's going to get rough again, and you need to conserve your energy and prepare for the rough patches. Don't get too out of, you know, yeah. celebrate the fact that you feel good, but don't get too ahead of yourself. You, you know there's another downturn coming. And literally in that 10 to 11 hour period, you want to quit over 100 times. That goes through your head. Yes. So just forget it. This is stupid you know, and you have to really go into your heart, your own culture and say, what's my mission? What's my purpose? Why am I doing this? And so here's where I go. I go and I always get emotional. Yeah. Like I can tell, I've told this story. I know the story. I'm on the edge of my seat. And, I and, I'm like, and I'm like, and, and so where my mission and purpose comes is I show up for you, Ron, whether it's on this call, whether it's my company, whether my friends, my family, I show up for you. And whether it's good times or bad times, we'll get through it. Right. You can count on me. I won't let you down and we'll get through this together. And so for me, my mission and purpose in doing Ironman is not to swim, bike, and run. Yeah. It's because it trains my mind and my body to withstand huge amounts of punishment so that I can be there for you, Ron, and I can be there for partners in leadership, and I can be there for our customers, and I can be there for my wife and my kids and my friends, and I'll show up and I'll be there through thick and thin. I'm not going to quit on you. So powerful. So far, I got chills, like you said, and like and I've heard the story and I, I just love it. And that kind of commitment, you know, just exudes from you and just resonates, I'm sure, with your teams, with your family, knowing uh, that they can count on you no matter what. And, and, and how important is that as we sit here wrapping up the, the year of 2020 and all that we've gone through during COVID, I remember in March talking with our executive team when everything was starting to really, really flare up, when it was all happening, like literally daily, when the NBA stopped playing and they started canceling everything else. And you could just see just literally the country shutting down one step at a time. And we started having daily executive team huddles around this. And, uh, you know, we made the decision, this is happening. It's the right thing to do. We got to get everybody home like like now and we did it in two days and we got everybody home and, and got them set up and then we started meeting daily for the next it, it was six weeks probably while we were in the thick of it and what's awesome about kind of with your story you can depend on you and looking at my team and this culture i didn't know what was going to happen with COVID. i wasn't sure what was going on with businesses man i you just didn't know anything at the time it was a scary time and i remember being around the table with my with my team or on the zoom call and going but we're all in this together and i know i can count on every member of my executive team and i know the teams they've built and i know we can count on our people we are going to figure our way through this and that's that's the one solid i knew going through it and then as we went through it and we started getting like literally daily reports from the field and stuff and then you started seeing how every team was adjusting and then all of a sudden we're home and then you're like, well, we set a bunch of meetings last week. Oh, we did this last week. Oh, now we're doing this. And you started to see people from the front lines, what they're doing. You saw our service engineers banding together and our leaders to get face masks when this was all going right and get what they needed to be and say, I will take care of our customers. I was so inspired of it by all of it. And it comes down to that culture of surrounding yourself with the right people. And I knew I could count on them. 
Uh, and that's what got us through to, to where we're at today. And, and think about that, Ron, Service Express, the culture, your team, your leadership during that time. So think about that for a second. And this is gonna sound strange. There's so much gratitude in what you just said right there, that gratitude, because that experience that you just led your team through, that you did, compounds in knowledge going forward. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. Right. In that, when they, because you, you're going to hit bumps. Right. Yeah. But what you, you know, described on a try on an Ironman is like running a company. You're going to exactly. have your ups and your downs and your different things. It's a journey. It's not a straight line up. And, and, and the fact that you push through that, it, it puts that synopsis in the brain and it strengthens that synopsis to say, next time, oh yeah, we got through. We'll figure it we out. We went to hell and back. We can, yeah. We've got this. We've yeah. got this, right? Yeah, that's so, right. And I'll go back to the team and, and, and how it all begins in our mind with surrounding yourself with the right people. And you use the frame, I let us through through that, which I appreciate. And but what doesn't get enough attention is my team, our employees in the company. What they, what I hope they know, maybe they don't realize, they led me through it. Yeah, that is a leader. Is the power of having a great team, a great culture, and people that you can count on. They're not going to bail. Look, I'm out. I'm going to go get another job. I got. I'm. I'm taking off. I'm doing this. Like. They don't know fully. They led me through it, right? And it was together we got through it. And when you get to that point, you built a team like that, that's so powerful. And as a leader, it allows you to say, I don't wear the burden of the world on my shoulders. And that's how you avoid burnout because I've got people I can, I can count on and, and, and through this. And, you know, with my executive team, what we met daily was interesting. You know, we all had our ups and our down days, all days we were feeling good, like we're going to do it, we'll get through it. And other days where we read the news or a family member had it, or you just felt kind of like, oh, you know, what's going on? But then we, we picked each other up like any team, right? We picked right. each other up and we got through it and we could lean on each other. And that's how we got through it together. Let, let me ask you this question on that, Ron, because yeah. I want to, I want to peel that back a little bit. So you know, I love your energy and what you bring, you know, and, and I think that's what we appreciate. That's our connection in your passion for the business and your passion for people, right? And again, like you said, our, the team and the employees led you through that. But where, in order to get where you are, and I, I, I tell a story that's fairly, you know, and, and I can relate to that story and make it tangible, but it, it's, it's harder out of that, out of that experience, other than a sports experience. Yeah. It's sometimes harder to figure out where you're building that muscle. Where do you think you got that? You know what I mean? Because you're, you, you're building that that grit muscle and have built it where do you think where where do where do you fall back on to get that you know i'll tell a story from earlier earlier in my career so i joined service express i was sales manager i came in i was the like the 15th employee or so came in as a sales manager this is back in 1997 and the first year and a half uh you know smaller company four locations i had four people on my sales team first year and a half we did great. I kind of brought in some training, some process, some system that I had learned, implemented it with the team. They really, really gravitated towards it and we had success. And then I started to, then I started to want to expand the team. Uh, and that's where I really started to struggle. I didn't all, you know, all that we do through our interview process and things that I think are really successful today, we didn't have back then and I didn't have back then. So I was selecting wrong. I was selecting on skill. I was hiring too fast and just selecting wrong as we were doing that. And then of course the performance wasn't there and then frustration would set in and look, I'm a pretty like into it, emotional, intense person, right? As you could probably tell. And so 
when that's not going well, I can start to get frustrated. Then if we're not on the same page, kind of culturally or how we should do things, then the frustration boils boils over. And so I went through a couple year period of time that was pretty frustrating with me kind of beating my head against the wall on that and turnover and selecting wrong. And uh, it really came to a head. I think it was uh, it was in, it was the year 2000 is what it was. And we'd gone through Y2K around here for our business. We service, com, you know, hardware, computer hardware and data center. So the whole is it Y2K compliance scare and people upgrading. So uh, that was one of our years of single digit digit growth. And I just I was I was frustrated. I was frustrating others. And I remember just kind of thinking and I'm like, man, I, I would not want to work for me. Like I'm not a good leader. Um, in fact, I feel like I'm not a good employee either. I'm probably not a great friend right now. I'm grumpy. I'm frustrated. I'm mad. And I don't know what, and I'm, the harder I try, it's like I'm digging myself in. I felt like in my heart, I wanted to do the right things, but the way I was going about it wasn't working for me or anyone else. And, and so and there were times during that when you're just like, I just, uh, you know, you feel like you want to quit. You do. Like you said, the triathlon. I remember there was this, the poem and, I, and it's, it's kind of a well-known one. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like, it's basically whatever you do, do not quit when you're closest to the goal. Like do oh, not yeah, quit. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I remember reading that and I was just like, I'm just going to show up tomorrow. I'm just going to show up tomorrow. And finally, I forget exactly what triggered it, but I just had this internal, like, yeah, I can't do it this way anymore. And I, and I called a meeting with the founder of the company who was involved in the business and a couple of the, the senior leaders who later became members of my executive team. And I sat in the conference room and I just said, I can't do this anymore like this. Like, I, and I just kind of laid this out. Like I'm a bad, I'm being a bad leader, a bad employee. I'm making everybody mad. I'm unhappy. Ugh, you know? And so, and at the time we were growing and I was trying to figure out, was I really the person that could lead the sales organization going forward, or was I not? And I, yeah. and I was just very vulnerable and transparent with them. I said, look at, sometimes I think I can't do this and you need to find somebody else. And other times I think, man, if you get rid of me, you're in trouble because I know, I do know what to do. I'm just not doing it right now for whatever reason. And I said, so it was really interesting. And this wasn't really thought out. It was just, I said, I can't keep going like this. So we need to answer this question. So we need to hire my replacement. We need to interview for my replacement. If we find the right person, I will step aside for the good of the company and everybody in it to let that person like run wild. And, and like, and so I'm like, I won't leave you now, but we need to find my replacement and we need to answer this question. And if you find the right person, like, I'm, you know, I'm leaving. So I literally, and everybody they were all great. They were all phenomenal. The, the, the founder, he was great. He's like, look at your service express person. We don't want to lose you, but we got to figure this out. You know, and he was right. And so we said, all right, let's put the ad out or call recruiters. However we did it. I literally sat in interviews for my replacement and, <laughs> and it wasn't, I wasn't just going through the motions. Like I was real, like I was willing to, you know, and it's one of those meetings, like there's tears, you know, and like, I, I will leave. And uh, I won't leave you empty handed, but if you find somebody better, I just want this place to do well. And so we went through that for a couple of months, interviewing different people. In the meantime, he came back to me and he said, I want you to block out all the noise. I hired you for a reason. I believe in you and what you do. I just want you to go lead how you wanna lead. Don't worry about me, anybody else around, go be you. And we'll go through this and let's just see what happens. So I did, and I started to really lead with the relationship and the connection with the people, which was completely missing. I was just drilling them, treating them like a quota number that they had to deliver. I was totally missing that I care about you first, you know, yeah. build a relationship. So I started there. Let's start there and see what happens. So long story, longer, I guess. But the end is right around this time of year at the end of 2020, we had a record-breaking fourth quarter. Sales went boom way up. We interviewed people and what we kind of found was nobody had the secret magic formula that we didn't sort of already know and think about. We just had to adjust how we did it. 
sales took off. And uh, I remember it was, it was, uh, it was New Year's Eve. I was working that morning. I stayed a little bit to the afternoon. Everybody left the company except the founder and I, and he came in my office and he said, and we were kind of talking and uh, said, well, what, we, it looks like we're going to stay together, right? Like we're going <laughs> to, things are going well. And we didn't find like, we're going forward. It's kind of like, yeah, you know, two guys talking like, yeah. And I just said, look at, thank you for standing by me. Cause you had every reason not to, and you had every reason just to replace me. And I just appreciate you know, the loyalty and just seeing me through. And he said this, you know, similar, thank you for not leaving me, you know, and working yeah. through this together. And it took off from there and uh, I adjusted my style. Certainly not perfect, not perfect today, but like, I'm going to lead with people first, lead with culture first and build on that. And we just really took off. And in 2002, he ended up naming me president of the company and that's when we put together our core value, which is to help people achieve their personal, professional, financial goals. And it said, we are going to lead with people first. Yeah. Number one strategic initiative. Number one thing we do, uh -huh. hire right and create that environment. Nothing else is more important. And that has been, and the founder, he behaved, like he acted that way. Like it was all in our DNA. Sure, we just sure. sort of brought it up and said, and put it out there for the world to see and say, this is number one. And it's, been working ever since. And so that was sort of my moment that look in the mirror where like you're at rock bottom, right? Everybody thinks right. like, oh, look at successful, you're at rock bottom, you know, yeah. not sleeping at you night. Felt that, right? oh. You want to quit, right? You want wanted to quit. to quit. It was everything I could do not to. What an um, incredible experience. What it was unbelievable. Incredible. And so I think about that actually often and go back to those days when I just did not know, like I didn't know what the end was. I didn't know right. how the story was going to play out. And so when you talk about like your triathlon training, that's my triathlon that I go back to and say, I got through that. Right. We can get through what, what comes up. And what, what's so great about that story, Ron, is there was a tipping point there. That mm -hmm. tipping point was and what a what a wonderful wonderful piece of advice he gives you at that point just yes. go be you mm -hmm. just go so all of a sudden he's like don't worry about me i'm going to you're you're safe go be you right so so think about the empowerment and i think you do that at, with the culture at service express with everybody right you you're that way, like, go be you. Don't be me. Don't be Dave. Don't be Suzanne. Don't be Steve Jobs. Don't be Jeff Bezos. You be you, you know, that, and what an amazing lesson and tipping point right there. Yeah, it, it was incredible. And I think you hit on a good point around leadership, which is being authentic to yourself, right? And so, yeah. like, I'm pretty demonstrative and loud and you know, and it's funny, my head of sales, my chief revenue officer now, uh, Bill, you know, Bill, I'm talking about Bill, Bill Golder, like very in, in, right, introspective, like yeah, right, right. introvert, very calm. He's the calm in my storm, you know, yeah, and yeah. very calm, thoughtful, strategic, analytical. Like, I love it. And he's great at it. And he's way better than I was. And we kind of joke, we balance each other. Like, yeah. he's kind of like, okay, we got this. We'll figure it out. We'll problem solve. Like, Bill, what are we going to, like, we got it. We're going to do this, then do that, you know? And then sometimes to him, I'm like, hey, but let's, let's show a little bit, you know, and let's fire up the troops a little bit. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's great balance. Uh, but the key part is being authentic. I, I can't be Bill. I like, don't have it. I told, I just said this right. to him yesterday. I'm like, I wish I had your calm DNA. I just don't have it yeah. in me unless me I'm either. asleep. Right. I just don't. And uh, I love it. And it just, that's about having a great team where you balance each other. You don't want to all be the same. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think you and I could go down this route too, but that's my chief strategy officer. Uh, our chief revenue officer did a, a wonderful thing. He does it on his calls. Uh, and he starts off his, his team calls with it and he picks one person and everybody has 15 seconds to say what they admire about that person. Mm, yeah. And it just starts the call with just that person is just, just coming. Up, up, right. Up, yeah. Right. And, and for whatever reason, he started it with 
our chief strategy officer who sits on his call with his team, right? And, um, and our chief strategy officer had just been through a pretty challenging situation that our chief revenue officer didn't even know. So it just happened to be happenstance yeah. that he said, okay, what do, what do you admire about Bob? And, and it went around and it got to me because I happened to be on that call that week. And I said exactly what you just said, right? I said, Bob's not me. <laughs> Bob, I admire he's level-headed. He thinks differently than I do. You know, I'm like, hey, let's do this. And, and Bob's like, hmm, well, maybe this, you know. Right, and, yeah. And, and it's not me. I'm like, come on, Bob, get, get fired up. And But that's what I admire about it because right. the results are better as a result of, those different views. That's exactly right. You're way, it's way better. It's a way stronger team, well, more balanced, more thoughtful, and you need each other. He needs your energy some, probably sometimes, right? Yeah. Uh, on, on that. And so um, yeah, if you I look I back that. in years, and I don't know about your career and my career, I can look back and say, it wouldn't have been that way for me. I, I, I looked for people that were more like me. You know right. what I mean? Right. And, and as I became more aware of, of how to optimize performance, it was like, no, look, look for differences. That's, That's right. Gonna create opportunity. Yeah. Where are our gaps? Where's my gaps? Where are the team gaps? And look to fill those gaps. Don't look for it. And I think I made that same mistake early too. so much like my way is the right way right. Look to duplicate that. And it just doesn't, in fact, you get, you know, too much to that same personality, it can, it can also flare up on you in, in, in a yeah. hurry, right? Right. So there's, and I've experienced that because, because, you know, and where it's where, because you and I are a lot alike in this, you can be an empowering presence, right? And you get, you know, we're evangelist and we're evangelizing culture and we're evangelizing growth and in personal and professional growth. And we're getting excited about that. And, and so sometimes you need that other view of the world because Ron, I know, you know, when, when you tell me something, I'm, I'm like, believe in it. Right. And, and, we have beliefs in our head, we meaning you and I, I'm just talking, yeah. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to be vulnerable here saying, yeah, I have this belief in my head and I'm like going, and sometimes I need the two by four across the head right. from somebody who's thinking about it differently to say, no, I think we run off the cliff if we go that way. Yeah, that's right. But, but if you don't have strong people around you, they won't stop you from going off the cliff. They'll say, okay, Joe, yeah, let's go. Because their insecurities want, believe that if they agree with me, then I'll like them more. Right. Right. Which is the opposite, right? Like I opposite. want you to, I want those who won't, who will disagree with me, you know, yes. not just for the point of doing it, but like, if you don't agree, tell me like yes, that, please. That, that's strength. <laughs>